I recently found that I had a really strong need for an overhead camera rig, and in this video we're going to go over how I made it and how I overcomplicated it just a bit. To start off with, this is the desk that I had. It's an old drafting desk that my wife used to use for drawing, but it's been sitting in our basement unused. And all I'm using for this project as far as materials go is some 2x3s. These can be purchased at your local hardware store for about 2-3 to three dollars for an 8 foot section. And I used 4 of them for this project with a lot of leftover material at the end. So this is just the cut stuff. I'm not going to show it because that's kind of boring. What I decided to do and overcomplicate things is go through and make half laps. Basically the stuff in the X's is going to get cut out and what I'm going to keep is the other side. The idea behind this is that when I cut everything out and get it all set up and squared up, it's going to be able to go through and self-square itself. So I don't have to worry about clamping and doing all the other stuff. If I just go ahead and build these right, I have everything set up ready to go and it's easy to do. It's very quick and should look good. As I said, I overcomplicated this a whole bunch. You don't need to go through all the steps. This could be simply screwed together without doing any cuts whatsoever except for the wood itself. So you don't need any tools to complete this project except for screws and a drill. That's really all you need. I have a bandsaw, so I went through and they did some half laps, but again, this is not necessary at all. And if you don't have a saw, they'll cut it at the hardware store for you. You may have to pay a few cents for them to do it, but you can get it done really quickly, really cheaply, and have it ready to go. I sometimes do this because my car doesn't like to fit big pieces of lumber very easily, so sometimes I'll have them cut it down just so I don't have to take the car seat out of the car itself. So here they are all done. You can see that I cut off some ends and squared them up so that when I put them over top of each other, they're all going to line up perfectly. They'll square up themselves. It's really, really a nice way to make things if you're trying to do things on the cheap. Uh, especially with stuff like 2x3s because very rarely do you get something straight. This is a good way to go through and just make sure they fit nicely and easily together. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just the way I went because I, I like playing with my tools and it's a good excuse to use them. After that, it's time to glue and screw all this stuff together. It helps it stay a little bit more stable, a little bit more permanent, and the glue adds a lot of strength as well. So I'm just going through here, gathering all the screws, and I do this twice, one for each side. After that's done, I attach the back, tops, and front pieces, and it's ready to go. Now here's where I started taking my simple $10 worth of lumber and started adding a little bit more complexity. What this is, is this diffusion paper, and basically the idea here is that I'm going to add lights to this thing, so it's pre-lit, it's ready to go, all I have to do is flip the switch, and everything lights up. Uh, so this diffusion paper helps the light be a little bit softer, not as harsh, spreads it out so it's not just a beam on top of there. Now I'm going to be using a total of four lights on this. Uh, some of them have diffusion already built in, some of them don't, but I want to make sure we have it. So I picked up some diffusion cloth on Amazon and I'm just stapling it right in. It's not going anywhere, it's not getting any stress, I'm just kind of stretching it out and stapling it in place so that it's ready to go for what I need to do. The next step here is to go through and mark out exactly where I'm going to drill holes to connect my camera to the cross member going across the top rails of the camera rig. I have a cage and a handle on top of my camera, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes, I'm going to mark out exactly where the holes are supposed to go using a pencil, and then I'll drill the holes straight through. And then I'll have bolts that will connect and screw into the handle right through the wood. So the wood will hold it up and it'll be connected to the handle itself. Depending on your setup, this may be completely different and you may have to find a different mounting solution, but for me with this handle, all it has is threaded holes so I can thread right through, screw them in, and I'm ready to go. And here's what it looks like prior to being on the rig itself. Uh, basically there's two bolts that go through with washers and I just use an allen wrench to go through and screw them together. It threads into the handle itself so it's attaching and always tightening itself to the wood piece. After using this a few times, this is a little bit of a pain to get on and off, so I might find a different solution to this in the future, but for right now, it totally works. Here's the basic rig. The camera's attached, it connects to both the cross members, and it stays on there very nicely and very solidly. I can easily go through and access the camera, see exactly what's on the screen, and change all my settings if necessary. The nice thing is everything is adjustable, so if the camera's not in the right spot, I can move it very easily and have the perfect shot. I 3D printed some holders that's going to connect the dowel rod across the back. And the purpose of this is it's going to hold craft paper so that I can change the backgrounds or I can write on things and get a kind of consistent background to my videos. 
I then add some 5 8 inch lighting mounts for my LED studio lights. These will be the main lighting sources for all of the things inside of the overhead camera rig. It's then just a matter of drilling power poles for my dowel rod and screwing them into place. So here's my completed overhead lighting rig. It started off as being about a $10 project and ballooned a little bit past there. But you can see the LED lights on the sides. There's some shop clamp lights at the top to provide overhead light. And the craft paper going across the whole thing that allows me to be able to change my backgrounds very quickly and very easily. Now I can capture things that I've never been able to capture before in a controlled, evenly lit environment. 